So we're teaching these skills already to our students. All we need to do is help connect them to coding so that students understand, oh, that's even why I learned these skills. There's a lot of important math connections, language arts connections. Um, and coding shouldn't just be kept to those subjects. Think about how you use coding in science. Right now, they're actually coding drones to go out in the uh, Great Barrier Reef to help plant out uh, the coral reefs and rejuvenate them. So these skills for coding aren't just connected to this, they're gonna help rejuvenate our world as well. Um, always make sure that when you're working on coding, you don't just keep it isolated to math and language arts because, oh, it's procedural writing. Oh, it's uh, using pattern recognition. There's a lot more to it and how it benefits everything. Um, so keep that in mind. And the last part about why coding is important is let's talk about what type of skills it develops in our students. Creative problem solving. You can code the same code in multiple different ways. So if you're telling a drone to move forward, for example, you can tell it to move forward one step, move forward one step, move forward one step. That's plus three if you weren't counting with me. So that's telling the drone to move forward three steps in three separate commands. You can even just say move forward three steps in one command, cut that time down. You're still getting the same goal accomplished. You're just getting it accomplished in a longer chain or a shorter chain. And that's not right or wrong, as long as it fulfills whatever need you require, like it's getting the job done, right? So there's no once, not one single solution for any problem. That's important for students to recognize. Computational thinking is probably one of the most important skills that coding nurtures in you. Computational thinking is the ability to break down a problem. The first step of it is called decomposition. So it's seeing a problem and break it down into steps. For example, if you're baking a cake, what are the ingredients that go into this cake? What are the multiple ingredients? What am I gonna need? What utensils do I need? So that's decomposing a problem, breaking it down into all the different things you need to succeed. The second step of computational thinking is pattern recognition. What am I doing again and again and again? So in, if you're baking a cake, for example, maybe you're working with layers. So I would have to repeat the step multiple times to get to that solution of finally baking and finalizing that cake. The third step of computational thinking is abstraction. So I know these are all the ingredients I need. I know these are the patterns that are gonna repeat. I have a lot of information in my head. What part of that information is irrelevant? Um, filtering out all that unnecessary information, putting it to the side, you don't need it right now, and then moving on to the final step, which is formulating a solution. And that, that might even be something as simple as recognizing, it's not important what order I prepare my ingredients, it's important how I combine them. So I set forward, prepare those ingredients, combine them, bake that cake, and boom, what can I do next time that's gonna bake this cake more efficiently, make it more delicious? That, that's a very important skill, not just for math, language arts, that's anything, right? If you're using historical thinking, that filtering process and computational thinking is gonna get you there a lot faster. It's gonna get you there in life, solving your problems in a more efficient way. So don't think you know, coding is this thing we do on computers. It uses a lot of important skills that are beneficial to the future of our students. There is a whole market of jobs in their future and that comes down to what our educational philosophy is, right? Why are we teaching our students? One of the things for me is to make sure that they economically succeed and thrive in the future. These skills are gonna get them there. So boom, we've empowered their future. We've empowered their personal problem solving skills. One more time, I really wanna reiterate, go out there, go to code.org, experience it for yourself if you haven't and find creative ways how to plug it into that curriculum. But coding isn't like an isolated activity you do by yourself. Have them code in pairs. That's how they do it and that's how real coders work. One person sits on the computer and types out the code. The other person watches the code and says it out loud. So the person who's typing it is actually hearing the code from someone else. And both of them are actually seeing that same code and both of them are able to give different perspectives and problem solve it. So think about how you can make it a social activity as well because that's how coding works in the real world. 
Um, hopefully we've made a lot of connections. Go experience it for yourself. Thank you so much for your time and be safe and good luck in the future.